Welcome to the second section of the four section Introduction to Software Escrow Agreement brought to you by the Timbus Project. Section two will follow on from the first section by explaining the risks that are covered by escrow agreements. Which risks should be covered by the escrow agreement? Software failure caused by trigger events may lead to lost output and financial loss. In particular, if the software was created based on the special requirements of the licensee, it may not be easy to find replacement software. To avoid this scenario, it is very important to include the following risks in an escrow agreement. 1. Insolvency of the licensor. 2. Liquidation or shutdown of the software company due to the lack of funds. 3. Discontinued software support. To continue using the software, the licensee may need to adapt it to new or different requirements and he may not wish to lose previous investments in the software's customization. 4. Refusal or failure of the software developer to fulfill contractually established obligations. And 5. Transfer of IP rights to a new owner. If the new owner provides no escrow protection, the licensee is not protected against the mentioned risks. For example, if the new owner becomes insolvent. The licensee has to inform the escrow agent when one of the trigger events occurs. The escrow agent has the obligation to inform the software developer that the user has indicated the occurrence of a releasing event so that the software developer has the possibility to reply. If the software developer does not answer within a fixed time or does agree to the release of the material, the escrow agent has to hand over the deposited material to the user. If the software developer disputes the existence of a releasing event, there has to be a contractually stipulated mechanism for the escrow agent to act. The agreement has to provide the possibility of a voluntary arbitration or court judgment in order to arrive at a decision. In order to understand the impact of the software company's insolvency on the escrow agreement, one needs to understand the impact on the software license as well. The escrow agreement can be contracted in the same agreement as the license, or separately in two contracts. But it is the software license that contains the right of use that the user needs to utilise the software. When the user is no longer allowed to use the software, the licensor is no longer obliged to safeguard the operability of the software for the future. In Germany and Austria, licences for a predetermined period of time are treated like leasing contracts. The licensee has a periodic obligation to pay for the use of the software, and the licensor has the obligation to maintain the software. Austrian and German insolvency law establishes that where a mutual contract exists when the insolvency proceedings start, the trustee in bankruptcy has the option to fulfil the contract or to terminate it if one of the contractual parties has not fulfilled all their contractual obligations. This contains the accessory obligations of the contract. If one contracting party has fulfilled all obligations, the trustee in bankruptcy has no option right. Since the license contract is a contract for the performance of a continuing obligation, it is not possible that one party has fulfilled all contractual obligations if the continuation ceases. And, therefore, the trustee in bankruptcy can terminate the license contract with the consequence that the licensee's right to use the software expires. When the license contract remains effective, we must ask what effect the insolvency has on the escrow agreement. The simple answer is that it depends on who owns the deposit material. If the licensor is the owner, the trustee in bankruptcy will claim the handover of the deposit material from the escrow agent. The licensee has no possibility to get the deposit material. If the escrow agent is the owner, the trustee in bankruptcy will still claim the handover of the deposit material because under insolvency law the material is attributed to the licensor. This depends on the terms of the contract. When the escrow agreement establishes the obligation of the escrow agent to reassign the property of the deposit material when the contract terminates and no trigger event had occurred, the agreement is seen as a trusteeship and the material is economically attributed to the licensor so the licensee has no possibility to get the deposit material. If the licensee is the owner, 
The insolvency of the licensor does not affect the licensee because he is the owner of the deposit material and the trustee in bankruptcy cannot claim its handover. The licensee gets the deposit material if the trigger event of insolvency occurs.